Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Krauss, and in this episode, we explore Fyodor Dostoevsky's wonderful work, The Idiot. Dostoevsky's The Idiot is another great work by one of Russia's preeminent authors. The work draws on the Russian folklore archetype of the Holy Fool, a trope also found in Christianity. The main character, Prince Mishkin, is the embodiment of this archetype. He is the Holy Fool, and we will learn what this holy and good foolishness is through the course of the novel. Returning to Russia, after having been away in Switzerland for many years, battling epilepsy, Mishkin's appearance acts as a literary device for the incarnation of the Holy Fool, Jesus Christ. Again, a trope found in Christian literature. You could read, for instance, Tertullian or Erasmus, or even the biblical writings of St. Paul, where he describes the foolishness of Christ. Mishkin's sudden appearance acts as the in situ incarnation. His appearance causes a change in Russia and the people around him. Terrible sinners, mostly aristocrats, but not exclusively so, begin to openly confess their crimes because of Mishkin's presence. Mishkin's presence offers them, through his foolish aloofness and kindness, a path out of their sins, or at least to offer them the opportunity to confess their sins and their crimes. When you read The Idiot, Dostoevsky is doing something subtle yet profound. The confessions of these aristocrats is always done when Mishkin is nearby or in their presence. It is as if Dostoevsky is saying that in the presence of the Holy Fool, one has the opportunity to confess their shortcomings their crimes, their sins. Mishkin, however, falls in love with a harlot woman, Nastasha. Nastasha was a concubine to an aristocrat since she was 16 years old and is now a sexually profligate young woman, despite her radiant beauty and charm. She craves love, but doesn't know love. She is, as such, dominated, controlled by the spirit of lust. Rogozin, a member of the new moneyed merchant class, also lusts after her in turn. Their lusts intertwine toward darkness and eventually destruction and death. Within the idiot, Dostoevsky is including a lot of class commentary within his novel. The aristocrats are sinful in their pride and power and must be brought low in humility in order to gain redemption. The new moneyed merchant class, though not prideful as the aristocrats are, often fall prey to lust and use their money to acquire their dark desires. This, of course, is most explicitly represented by Rogozin. The poor, represented by Nastasia, though guilty of their own sins, so to speak, are nevertheless deserving of our sympathy. Nastasia is a sympathetic character. Nastasia is the individual whom we hope redemption truly falls upon. Thus, when you are reading The Idiot, you should take note of the class commentary that Dostoevsky is playing with. Again, the aristocrats, in their pride and power, are sinful, commit crimes, and they must be brought low in humility. They must be humiliated. They must gain the virtue of humiliation and therefore learn the virtue of humility if they are to gain redemption. The new moneyed merchant class, represented by Rogozin, are not much better 
than the aristocrats. Though the middled merchant class lacks the pride of the aristocratic elite, they use their money to achieve their dark, criminal, and sinful ends. Dostoevsky is saying here that those without virtue, like Rogozhin, will simply use their money to achieve whatever they want. Many of us who live today in the 21st century will probably find resonance with Dostoevsky's insights into how the upper middle class works. Meanwhile, the poor, again represented by Nastasha, though they are guilty of their own crimes and sins, are deserving of our sympathy. And you will note that even though Mishkin goes and traverses with all the different social classes, it is the poor, it is Nastasha to whom he offers his direct sympathy to. Mishkin offers Nastasha every chance to escape hell with him. There is no rhyme or reason, no rationality for Mishkin's love of Nastasha. That is why it is foolish and part of the holy fool motif and trope in Russian and Christian folklore and literature. There is no reason to be sympathetic other than to be sympathetic. Pity and compassion are necessary and needed in this world of darkness, cruelty, and lust, as revealed by the aristocrats and Rogozhin. Mishkin even offers marriage as the ultimate path out of the darkness that Nastasha is in. She initially refuses that marriage. And here, it's important to remember that Dostoevsky, as an Orthodox Christian, is laying heavy symbolism for us. We should be able to read the symbolism of Christ marrying the bride, the sinner, in order to bring redemption. Again, Mishkin is Christ and Nastasha is meant to be the bride. Mishkin, although Nastasha initially refuses the offer in marriage, continues to persist. He gives her more chances to be redeemed. She eventually accepts, but then abandons Mishkin on the altar and flees with Rogozhin, whose lust eventually kills her. Nastasha is killed by a knife through the heart, symbolizing the death of the heart by lust. The Idiot is Dostoevsky's great work on how foolish kindness, pity, and compassion is the path to redemption. This is not contradictory to his articulation of suffering as the path to redemption in crime and punishment. There are many and different paths to redemption. But in The Idiot, Dostoevsky offers foolishness, the foolishness of kindness and compassion as the path to redemption. And he shows us how foolish compassion and how foolish kindness embodied by Mishkin is available to all for our redemption if we accept it. If we do not, we will end up like Nastasha and the world will never understand the value, the virtue, and the power of foolish compassion and the wisdom of mercy. Compassion, mercy, pity, and kindness will save the world.